If you have a lens with an aperture ring, you have probably noticed these markings. Have you ever wondered what they're for? Well, stay locked in because in this video, I am going to show you what this is for and how this will help you. First, I want to give you a foreword about depth of field. Depth of field is the range of focus in terms of distance from the lens. Depending on your aperture, you will have optimum focus from a certain point up until another point in the frame. Let me show you an example. Everyone meet Balikun, our model for today. This shot is with f2.8. I want you to notice that the lens's focus stops at a very short distance after him. If I move the marker any further, it will be out of focus. We are going to mark where the focus starts and ends. Notice the barcode on my marker. Now let's switch to f8. At f8, you can immediately see the change in the depth of field. Here I am eyeballing the focus start and end points on my monitor and marking them with a red marker. Again, I am referencing the marker's barcode's readability for the focus. And don't get distracted by the dog. Stay with me here. Let's take a closer look at those marks that we made. These blue lines represent f 2.8's focus range from earlier. You can see that its focus range is short, hence we call it shallow depth of field. And these red lines are f 8s The more you close your aperture, the more focus range you get. Take note that the depth of field varies depending on your lens, aperture value, your camera sensor size, and the distance between the lens and the subject. Now what is the exact distance at which you could put everything in your frame focused? This distance is referred to as the hyperfocal distance. Hyperfocal distance in itself is a very deep topic. If you'd like to know more about it, there are lots of videos on YouTube explaining this. So going back to our original question, what do these markings mean? You can see that the markings are expressed by F values and distances by feet and meters. On the aperture ring, each F value is represented by colors which is then co-represented by lines. On the focus ring is the distance where your focus will start. So as you rotate the focus ring, the start and end points of your focus change. Let's try F8. If I line up the number 8 with this center marker, we should be at F8. You see how 8 is colored pink? Above here are corresponding lines with respect to each aperture's color. Since F8 is colored pink, we should pay attention to this pink line right here. You see there are two of them? These would be your range in terms of distance. Now watch this. As I line up the infinity mark to the first pink line, then we look at the second line here, it will give us a range of distance. So if this is 5, and 15 then the middle is 10 feet but I'm seeing we are way past the middle so I am gonna assume about 11 or 12 feet so what this tells us now is from 11 feet away from this lens all the way to infinity we will be focused another example if we go to f16 which is colored blue we should line up this infinity mark on this blue line right here and on the other side, it tells me that my focus starts at about 4.5 feet all the way to infinity. So at f22, I should get focus starting from 3 feet all the way to infinity. But if I fully open to 2.8, it doesn't give me any range at all because 2.8, as we saw in the earlier example, gives us a really shallow depth of field. Using this technique, I went and drove around and took photos by just swinging my camera. I was at f8 and aperture priority mode so I didn't have to worry about the exposure. All I cared about is whether or not the subject I want to capture is within my focus range which was 11 feet all the way to infinity. So I just flung my camera around and pressed the shutter without looking at the viewfinder. This is really helpful in street photography where you do not want to disturb the natural goings on of a busy environment. You know, people tend to be cautious and most of the time furious when a camera is pointed at them. 
Also, you want to be quick to capture any moment, so with this, you do not have to worry about the focus as you already know the focus range. All you have to do is point and shoot. Check out this photo right here and pay attention to the plane as I zoom in. This technique is mainly used by landscape photographers who put everything in their frame focus. I tried doing this at night where you have very low visibility of your landscape and pulling your focus is very hard to do. I had to rely on the lenses guide right here and I did a long exposure and this is what I got. If you want to see the quality of these photos, head on over to my Instagram at the Mark Cruz Media. And give me a follow while you're at it. So I hope after all the examples that I featured in this video, you guys now have an understanding on how to use the markings on your lenses. I also hope that I have interested you in the topic of hyperfocal distance photography. That's all that I have for you this week. Thank you for watching and again, I'll see you in the next one.